Welcome to Crypto 101. Our guest today is founder of Coin Sutra and author of HODL, Harsh Agrawal, who is going to give us some great insights on crypto wallets. Welcome to Money Control, Harsh. Thank you, Rahul. Yeah. And hi, everyone. So, Harsh, most newbies in the crypto space are not even aware of the different kinds of wallets out there. They're purchasing their crypto of centralized exchanges like CoinDCX and Wazirx and leaving their crypto on exchange wallets. Can you tell us a little bit more about the risks associated with this method? Sure. So that's a very good question and something that I believe everyone should know and answer to this. So the promise of Bitcoin was to be your own bank. That means to remove the you know middleman and that you become the final custodian of your own wallet, right? Uh, that is what the Bitcoin offered. Now, for the normal user, an exchange is a good place to you know, like for this small time, like it's a good place to store your coin because they take care of the security. They take care of the, you know, ma making sure that your crypto coins are secure for, for a small time. Like, and I'm talking about the bigger exchanges. But when we talk about, you know, long-term hodler, uh, the best way to store is on your own wallet. And the reason being is this, you know, there are instances in the past when an exchange owner uh, passes away or, he ran away with the private key or some at times, and it happened with an Indian exchange also, by the way, it's called CoinSecure. Uh, they got hacked and people who have invested, they did not lose the money, but again, they, they some sort of lost the money. So it has happened in the past. So when you are actually keeping your coin in a crypto exchange, you are basically trusting them with your money. Should you be doing that if you're holding for like one year, five years, 10 year kind of horizon? Definitely not. So yeah. Avoid exchanges if you're doing it for long term. If you're a short term trader and you know, like you're kind of day trader, exchange is okay. So again, it depends on which. Uh, what is your technical know how? If you're a, if you're a technically smart guy, then definitely own your own wallet or learn how you can store the crypto on your own wallet. But uh, if you're if you're not technically smart and you don't know how to keep yourself secure and safe online, then uh, high quality exchanges like Binance, Huobi. Uh, Wazirx, some of them, like, you know, those are high quality exchanges. They kind of have hot wallet and cold wallet kind of setup. So they kind of ensure that your uh, your cryptos remain secure. Yeah, before I get into the next question, you know, I just wanted you to clarify for the crypto newbies out there what the term HODL means. It's a, it's a very interesting means HODL because long time back at, at Bitcoin Talk Forum, which was the only forum where people used to talk about Bitcoin, you know, somebody talked about, somebody was probably writing about holding and he by mistake wrote HODL, HODL. And that means hold on to your dear life, like never sell your Bitcoin, just hold on to your dear life. And that became a very popular meme in the Bitcoin community. And that's why you keep hearing like HODL, HODL, hold on to your dear life. Could you tell us what kind of wallets exist out there? And if you could also suggest some brand names. So there are different classification of crypto wallets. The first, I mean, I'll, I'll explain all of them. For, uh, or the major ones. The first one is custodial and non-custodial wallet. A custodial wallet is when you're trusting somebody else with your private key. And before we move move to that, let's understand the private key and public key, right? Like, uh, let's take the analogy of email address. Yeah. So Rahul, let's say you have your email address as rahul at gmail.com, yeah. but that's, I believe that's not your email. So don't, people don't start emailing yeah. you, but, <laughs> but that that's your public address. You know, that's like the Bitcoin address that you give to others to send you Bitcoin. Then there is yeah. a password to access your email. That is your private key, which is alphanumeric, like, you know, some 32 digit. That's alphanumeric. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. password, you, and that pri that is called private key. Now that private key, whoever is the owner of that private key can access that Bitcoin. That is your password. You don't share it with anyone. Now, as I said, mm -hmm. it's alphanumeric. So there is another thing called a uh, seed word. Now seed word is like, you know, words like water, food, so there is like 12 word, 18 word or 24 word seed word from which private and public key is generated. Now, when we are setting up a wallet, we usually get this seed word that we need to store safe. Now there comes the classification. There is custodial wallet and there's non-custodial wallet. When you are storing the cryptocurrencies on an exchange, that's a you're giving the custody of your wallet to somebody else. If the, if the exchange is shut down or the exchanges get hacked, you would never be able to ex, you know, retrieve your coin because you don't have the private key. A non-custodial wallet is when you have the ownership of the wallet. You are the one 
who who have to ensure the safety of the seed word or the private key in this case. So that's first classification. The second classification is based on the type of wallet or based on device. So there is browser wallet, like you know, like it's like a Chrome add-on or Brave add-on or Firefox add-on. And some of the popular ones are MetaMask for the Ethereum, Phantom, all the layer two solution. Another one which is upcoming is X DeFi wallet, where you can install, where you can store Bitcoin on a browser Chrome extension. Then comes the desktop browser. Desktop browsers are mostly uh, the one very popular one is Exodus. Another one is called Leisure Live. Then the third one is your mobile wallet, where uh, and the one that I could recommend is the Trust wallet for that. Uh, there are uh, then there is hardware wallet, which is the most uh, secure wallet out there. Uh, some of the most popular name there are Ledger Nano X, Ledger Nano S. It's by the same company called Ledger. Another one is called Trezor. They have two model. The popular one is Trezor Model T. There is another one called Safe Pal, which is like a cheaper version of the hardware wallet. Cost I think about thirty nine dollar. Uh, it's 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 for the people who are looking for a very budget uh, budget friendly solution. So Safe Pal is there. And which is the safest wallet out there? And at what point would you recommend getting one? Well, it depends on a lot of uh, scenarios. So, for example, let's say you are a developer and you are building an app, right? You need to transact every now and then, and you you want to store a very small amount just to pay the gas fee. In that case, a, a browser wallet like a MetaMask or XDeFi wallet is the best for this in that case. Now, second scenario is you are an investor and you are investing, let's say, ten thousand dollar or twenty thousand dollar in Bitcoin or Ethereum or other cryptocurrencies. In that case, you should definitely invest in a hardware wallet. And the reason being is this: you remember, like I talked about the private key and the seed word. When you are yes. setting when you are setting up a wallet on your desktop or mobile, the seed word is shown on that mobile screen or the desktop screen. Now, if a hacker or if an app who has access of your screen, which is which is a which is a very normal scenario, probably your account would be hacked in that case. But when you're using a hardware wallet, a hardware wallet has its own screen, its own processor. So everything is shown on the hardware wallet on a separate screen. The seed word is shown there. So that way, your, your cryptocurrencies are always safe and secure. And when you're sending a, you know, a transaction, you have to physically press the button on a hardware wallet to send the transaction. Otherwise, nobody can uh, transfer the coin from your wallet. So that's where uh, if you're an investor, a hardware wallet is the best. If you are a developer, uh, uh, browser wallet is the best. If you are a very, you know, like if you're just starting out with a small amount, you can also use a mobile wallet. Uh, I recommend using the iPhone based uh, mobile wallet rather than Android because Android has a lot of apps which, which kind of records your screen and it is proven in the past. So these are some of the uh, suggestions from myself. Uh, are these wallets free to download? Uh, I know hardware wallets probably cost, uh, you know, a bit of money. But what about these online wallets and, you know, hot wallets and browser wallets? Are they free? They are free. Uh, and you might ask, like, if they're free, how do they make money? You know, like, that's a very common yes. question. So, you know, all these wallets of let you buy or sell crypto within the wallet itself. They partner with, like, some companies like uh, Simplex or MoonPay to enable the buying selling. So they get get a commission on that, and when you exchange cryptos using their DeFi wallet, like for example, MetaMask is one of the top wallet out there. They have in in uh, in wallet exchange option. So when you do that, they also keep keep a portion of it. That's how they make money. That's okay. interesting. Should one purchase a hardware wallet of uh, a third party site like an Amazon, or is it recommended to purchase it directly off the website? Always buy from the official website. You know what has happened in the past? Like somebody bought a Legend NOX from eBay at a like cheaper price. Now that uh, wallet came with the pre-filled seed word. Like there was a sheet which has the pre-filled seed word, and the guy was very really happy. Like, hey, now I don't have to do all this, and he started putting Bitcoin in this. The next day he woke up, all his Bitcoin was gone. Right. So point is like when you are buying from the secondary market, you are putting yourself into the risk. So you should always buy from the official website. If the official website have listed resellers or their Amazon link on the official website, you can definitely buy from there because it makes the buying easy. But yes, uh, always always prefer the official website. So, could you share some best practices associated with self custody, and what would you what would be your advice for people who are going down this crypto path of hodling? Uh, how should they store their crypto? 
Sure. Uh, so very first thing, like there are new series of wallets which are coming, which does not let you, uh, which are like non-custodial, but does not require you to write down the seed phrase. They store your key uh, on iCloud and then you have another layer of password or your face used as the way to decrypt those. So Zengo is a wallet which you can try or there, if you are in the Ethereum ecosystem, there is another wallet called Argent. So putting that across. Argent, yes. Argent. Now, if you talk about the people, like let's say people who are actually writing on the seed phrase, how to keep that secure. So that like your ledger can... and treasure, for example. Yeah. So if I purchase a ledger or treasure, I'm going to have yeah. to write down the seed phrase, right? Right. And that's a little intimidating for me because if I lose that, I've lost my coins, not your keys, not your coins, right? Definitely. So very first thing, the biggest risk is the natural risk, you know, like because of the water or fire, if you're writing down your seed word in a piece of paper and some, some, some kind of misfortune happens, you kind of lose access to your wallet also, which is bad. So for them, the, there, is, there are solutions like crypto steel. Like, you know, there is a steel device in which you basically create your seed word, you write down your seed word and it is um, fireproof and waterproof. That is probably the best way to store your, uh, you know, like seed word. Another way is like, you know, it's 24 words. So basically what you do is you write down on two different pieces of paper, 12 word in each like that and combining they complete the 24 word you give it to two different people like who are who are unknown to each other and you are the one who knows that these are the two people who have access to your seed word and you tell it to your loved ones your family also like in some in case if something like that happens to you know some misfortune incident happens to us in that case they can retrieve those seed word from these two people and retrieve the coin Similarly, you can multiply this instead of two people, you can give it to four people, depending on how secure you want to keep. But uh, I, I see where you're coming from, but that can get a little bit confusing for the newbie. I'm saying if I am, let's say, you know, wanting to purchase crypto worth $10,000, so just to give somebody an example, um, that's about seven and a half lakh rupees. And that's not a huge sum. At the same time, it's not pocket change either. And I want to use a hardware wallet. Would you recommend writing down my seed phrase on a piece of paper and perhaps putting it in a bank locker along with your hardware wallet? Or would you uh, recommend writing it down on your, let's say your iPhone notes folder or somewhere on your laptop? Oh, definitely not, not online, never online. Like when you're writing down your seed phrase, never take a photo, never take screenshot, never write it down, uh, never put it uh, on anything which is connected to the internet. That's rule number one. Okay. Rule number two, uh, yeah. and this is like, this is something that a lot of people, uh, uh, you know, would be delighted to know that even if you lose your hardware wallet or one wallet, as long as you have that seed phrase, you can restore your cryptos to a different wallet. You are never bound to one particular wallet. So your, those seed words are very important. This is a good starting point. So in a nutshell, <laughs> what you're saying is we've got hot wallets, we've got mobile wallets, desktop wallets, and hardware wallets with hardware wallets offering the most security. And those are those pen drive looking pieces, right? Uh, pen drive looking objects. The biggest takeaway is to also know that just because you bought crypto on a centralized exchange, like uh, with CoinDCX or Wazirx, you don't own your crypto. Your crypto is on an exchange wallet. And God forbid, if something happens to the exchange, if it's hacked and it's happened in the past, you could completely lose all your coins, right? Yes, yes. So not your key, not your coin. Thanks, Harsh. That was wonderful. And uh, I, again, must say that I really enjoyed your book, uh, HODL, and lots of uh, useful nuggets in there. Thank you so much and wish you a fantastic 2022. Thank you, Raul. Same to you.